Hey, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Thomas. This is the Buffalo Fanatics and thank you for tuning in today. In this video, we are going to be talking about why Josh Allen must start week one. Stay tuned to find out what I'm talking about. So I got two things that I want to say. First off, I apologize to you guys, the fans, the fanatics. I also apologize to the Buffalo fanatics. I kind of been slacking a little bit, not going to lie. Um, I've been busy with work. I've been busy with my girlfriend. I've been busy living life. It's the off season. There's not much going on. So I apologize for not creating a lot of content recently, uh, but I'm going to try to be more consistent in the future. Number two. The Buffalo Sabres, if you guys are a Sabres fan, congratulations. I'm excited myself. Rasmus Dahlin, he just has press conference. He's going to be wearing number 26. Super excited about that as well. So congratulations to the Buffalo Sabres for picking the best player in the draft by far. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. But anyways, this video is not about me and apologies. This video is not about the Buffalo Sabres and Rasmus Dahlin. This video is about why Josh Allen must start week one. Let's get right into it. So the first reason on why I think Josh Allen must start week one is because if you go back and you look at successful quarterbacks who sat their first season, a couple weeks, two years, three years, you know what I mean? Those guys, I mean, most of the time, it doesn't really matter. Let's just be honest. It do, You don't really learn anything. You learn about how to be a quarterback in the NFL. You learn about what to do, how to prepare, but you can do that as a starter. You don't have to be second string, third string, you know, a uh, quarterback to develop those skills, those those just how to adjust to the NFL. You can do that as a starter. It's actually probably easier to do it as a starter because you have to assume the, the first string role, the first string position, the, the franchise guy, hopefully, quote unquote, you know, some teams don't have it, but you know, you have to assume that first position role anyways. But what I'm talking about as far as sitting and why it doesn't make sense unless you have a franchise quarterback to begin with, let's look at Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers sits under Brett Favre, a very talented quarterback, ends up learning from him, being great. Okay, let's look at Tom Brady and Jimmy Garoppolo. Just last season, we saw that Jimmy Garoppolo, as soon as he was traded, was electric with one of the worst teams in the NFL. I'm just saying, his future looks promising with them as well. Gets paid millions and millions of dollars just from like that five game, no losing streak. You know, he didn't lose a single game or whatever you want to say. He didn't lose a game. He was electric. He was great. Probably because he learned behind Bill Belichick and Tom Brady, learning how to develop those skills to become that first string. Now, why does it not make sense for the Buffalo Bills to do that? We don't have a franchise quarterback to begin with. We don't have a guy who's already established in Buffalo, who you know has two, three more years left. We don't have that. Who is a guy who's definitely one of the top guys, top 10 quarterbacks in the league. We don't have that kind of guy in Buffalo. We just don't. We have AJ McCarron and Nathan Peterman and Josh Allen. Now, does it make sense to sit Josh Allen if he is second, third string as far as in, in Brandon Bean and Sean McDermott's eyes? No. The reason why is because AJ McCarron has two years left on his contract. Nathan Peterman has three years left on his contract. Now, why does this make, now why is this, you gotta look in the future. You gotta look at the, the future of the franchise. You can't look at this season or next season or the season after that. You have to look like five years, 10 years in advance. Not all the time, of course, but you have to look in the future. And the future of the franchise, in my opinion, is Josh Allen. I can't see Nate Peterman or or AJ McCarron actually being our franchise guy. Now, if they are, fantastic. I would love to be wrong. Just give me a franchise quarterback. I don't care who his name is. I don't care who he is. I don't care what he's, just give me a franchise quarterback. That's plain and simple. I don't care if it's one, two, or three. I don't care any of those guys that we have on our roster right now. But the reason why I think that Josh Allen really needs to start is because AJ McCarron, let's say he comes in and he goes, let's say he does, he does 3,500, 3,800 passing yards you know, pretty decent, kind of putting Tyrod numbers, being conservative, 
you know, but let's say he wins 11 games. 11, he goes 11 and 5. Okay, okay, not bad, right? But then the next year comes, he's on a contract year. And if he doesn't go 12 and 11 and 5, 12 and 4 again, you know what I mean? Like, if he doesn't improve, do you resign him? Because you're like, okay, why'd you fall off this year? What was wrong? If I pay you, I got, I got Nathan Peterman, who's just sitting there. And I got Josh Allen, who is my seventh overall draft pick that is just sitting there. So the thing about starting AJ McCarron is his contract scares me as far as the ter- as far as how long it is because if he shines, I think that they should trade him. The reason being is because he's going to be a lot of money when he's really really hot. I don't see him being our franchise guy, but then again, does it make sense to trade him? You know what I mean? Because if he's if he's good, it kind of puts you in this it, it, it puts you in this pickle where. You either have to trade him or you have to sign him to a longer extension. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like this thing. And then it's like Josh Allen is just, he he doesn't matter. That's seventh overall draft pick plus the two seconds or whatever they traded up to get him. You know, that could have been three players. It's one that you don't even use now, you know? So it's just kind of like a, mm. I mean, if he's good, he's good. You know, if, if AJ McCarron is good, he's good. Plain and simple. Moving on though, Nate Peterman. Okay. If he shines... In preseason like he did last year who knows who what's who's to say that he comes in and sucks again you know who it's possible it's very possible it's actually more possible for him to come in he look good in practice and suck in a game now I will give him this I will give Nate Peterman the benefit the benefit of the doubt that Chargers defense was stacked last year and this year let's just be honest very solid defense, and half the time he got he threw an interception. You could say it was his fault. If he would have taken a sack, though, it would have been the offensive line's fault. We wouldn't even be caring about. We wouldn't even be talking about five interception Nathan Peterman. We talk about how bad the Buffalo Bills offensive line is that game. That's what I'm saying. If he if he tucks the ball and just takes a sack, you know, three out of those five interceptions, you're looking at two interceptions. Okay, he doesn't look that bad on paper. You know what I'm saying? It looks more bad on the offensive line. Plus, the Chargers defense was in was in his face pretty much every single play. You know, whenever he threw an interception. Um, so you know, that game I kind of give him a little bit of a pass for because it, it just seemed like the team was not clicking with him as the starter. They didn't want him. They it was nah. It was just a bad a bad decision to start him. I was excited at the time, but it was a bad decision only because that Chargers defense was very ruthless against uh against the buffalo bills and nathan peterman so if he's good let's just say nathan peterman is good does it really you know is, is are the buffalo bills really taken seriously though i mean i guess if he's good like i just can't see him winning more than eight games i really can't i mean so i don't know i just don't I, i'm a little bit off there i don't really know if i want nathan peterman starting However, the reason why I want Josh Allen starting is because from this draft, we learned a couple of things about him. He is persistent. You know, if he gets told no a million times, he's going to keep saying yes to himself. He's going to keep trying. Highest Wonderlick score. Take it for what it is. Um, you know, you could say, oh, that doesn't really matter. So you got that. You got the physical traits. You got this. You got a pretty big body. You got a pretty talented arm. You know, if you can develop him into a, you know, someone who's seasoned, who goes out there and can actually, you know, see the game in the NFL perspective, you know, the NFL quarterback perspective, you got a really good chance at making that guy a home run pick. And that's why I think that it is extremely important to start him week one. Even if you go six and 10, I was thinking about this today. I was thinking about if the Bills go six and 10, okay. Out of those 10 losses, let's say eight of them, the Bills lost by three or less points. If you take, if the next season you progress and you win four of those eight games, you're looking at a record of 10 and six. That's playoffs. That's playoff caliber. So, you know, it shows that this year, if we were to go six and 10 and lose eight of those 10 games, with a with a deficit of like three or less points, it would show that Josh Allen ha- is good enough to stay close in games. 
for the most part. I mean, it would depend on how the game goes. You can't come back in garbage time and, and have respect. It's going to have to be a close... You know, that's what I'm saying. But uh, the next season, let's say they have the same thing happen, except those four games, you win instead of lose. You know, out of that eight of the three or less points. You get you follow me here, then you go 10-6, and six, and then you're saying, oh, Josh Allen ain't bad. You know what I'm saying? So... And I just think Josh Allen, he's, he's, even if he isn't all that they say, he's still going to be very solid. I am rocking with Josh Allen. Um, I'm saying he must start. I'm saying that's the only way we have success. Um, I, I don't really think that we have a veteran presence. The, the closest veteran we have is AJ McCarron, who's only played four career games in the National Football League. That's not veteran level by any means. So he's the closest we have, and I just don't see Josh Allen starting, playing in two years, you know, starting the week one in two years, and having the same hype. People are going to forget about him. People are going to say, he didn't win the starting job. He's going to be a bum. I'm not even going to give it us credit. And then we're going to go back on this cycle of, of just not getting our franchise guy. And I think that you got to take a chance at some point, and it's... Sooner or later, you're going to get your franchise guy. You just got to keep taking chances. And I think that this this regime of Brandon Bean, Terry Pagula, and Sean McDermott, they're ready to take chances. They're ready to say, let's get this team to the next level. You know, 10, 11, 12, 13 wins. That's what I'm saying. I mean, they're, they're ready to get there. They're ready to work hard. They're ready to do everything that they can to get there. And I think that it starts with the man, Josh Allen. So whoever starts, um, good luck to them. I uh, really hope it's Josh Allen. Who are you guys rocking with? Tell me in the comments below. What player are you wanting to win the starting position? I know who Rico wants. Oh, he's down with the NPP for sure. He wants that Nate, Nate Peterman process. But you know what? I'm going to rock with whoever whoever wins the starting job. we got to rally behind him. That's all i got to say. But Josh Allen, um, I would not be shocked if he is named the starter week one. So that's going to do it for me, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment your opinions. Let me know exactly who you guys want to see as the starter come week one. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe to the channel um, for more amazing content. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm sorry that I have been kind of inconsistent, but I'm going to try to get back on track, if you know what I'm saying, and try to provide some pretty good uh, videos to you guys as well. Because you guys, the Bills fans, you guys, you guys deserve it for sure. Also, I want to give a big, big, big shout out to my awesome girlfriend. She made this. It's a little bowl. It's supposed to be a Bills looking bowl. It's like a ceramic uh, thing. It's pretty awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about it. <laughs> so shout out to her for making me that. Uh, it's pretty awesome. I love anything Bills. But that's going to do it for me, everybody. I hope you guys have a good day wherever you're watching this from. And go Bills. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.